Chris Devona from OSDN is back to help us set up a dual boot XP and Linux machine. Before the break, he showed us how to set up Windows. Now we're going to get Linux up yep. and running, correct? Okay, so we, before the break, we installed Windows and we partitioned the hard drive and we left about uh, four gigabytes for Linux. Exactly. Now what do we do? So after you slap in the Red Hat CD or whatever, you'll get to a screen that's, that's, like that's this. That's really mad. Which one do you recommend? Red Hat is it for I beginners? I recommend Red Hat because it's easy for me to answer their questions. When okay, that's them. the one you're most familiar with. Yeah. Okay, so Red Hat and Debian is what I use. Okay. Red Hat is what I suggest. Gotcha. So, yeah, so when you get to this thing, you select F disk. F disk. See, this is scary because you always see the F disk that, that's going to destroy all your data. In fact, it even says in brackets here, experts only. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have to be careful. Okay, just read the article that I put on, on the site and just. Yeah, that's, that's this one thing that you have to keep in mind. I mean, we're, as we're going through this, there is an article up on our website that explains all of this. Print that article out and just follow the steps. Well, let's proceed. Online help here. You hit M. It tells you all the little commands. And, okay. Anytime in, in Linux, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense. But you press M and it's going to show you all the help. It means mother help me. I mother help me. Okay. So, okay. Let's, let's so, go yeah, on. So, so we're at the so command line. Now what do we do? So no, you just press P, which prints P out shows commands. us the partition table as it okay. is right now. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to first create a new partition. Okay. Uh, which is N, sorry. And then primary partition, we're going to create partition number two. Okay, because okay. we already got partition one for Windows. Now right. we're going to create partition two for Linux. Got right. it. Uh, and so we just choose the default for the first cylinder. Cylinder, that's just a measure of hard yeah. drive space. So, for instance, this much. is like a, I guess, a 20 gig drive, and it's got 2,500 cylinders. So you can do the math in your mind or just not care. You don't care. Let's, Let's just go with the default. Right. Now if you here, don't know, go default. Now we need to leave a little bit of room for a swap. Partition. Now, what's a swap partition? It's like virtual memory on the Mac or on the PC. It's so you can sort of fake having more RAM than you actually okay, have. Okay, so your operating system thinks that the hard drive is RAM. We're, we're confusing right. it. Gotcha. Well, no, no, it knows what it's doing. It knows what it's it, doing. It's, it's fooling you. It's fooling me into yeah. thinking I have more RAM. Yeah. Gotcha. In, in a strange So we're going to create right. that, that. So we're just going to leave a little partition. bit of room at the end of the drive for that. So we're going to create okay. 30, 2350 is going to be the last cylinder we're going to choose here. Okay. Very simple stuff. So uh, now we're going to create the swap partition we talked mm -hmm. about. Primary partition, partition number three. And there's Oops, three right. partitions. Three primary, like so. And okay. then we just hit return, return, first and last cylinder, you know, just take the default values. Okay. Now, here's the tricky part. So, if you'll notice here, there's this little asterisk here next to uh, temp HDA1 right. underneath boot. That means that's the active partition, okay? So that's the first one it goes to when you turn on the computer. Okay. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to take it off that. So right now, the active partition, the one that's going to be recognized when we boot up is Windows. Which we don't want. We don't want right. that. Because okay. Windows doesn't know Linux exists okay. and doesn't want to know. All right. It's trying to ignore the presence yes. of Linux la, on la, the hard la, drive. La, la, la. There's no gotcha. Linux here. Right. So let's set it so that uh, Linux is the primary partition. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the second partition active. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, we're going to turn off the first partition being from being active. Gotcha. So right now they're both active, which doesn't make any sense. So how, did you, how are you going to turn that off? We hit A. Hit A. And then just shut it off. It toggles it. Again, all these directions are going to be on the website. Right. Okay. And there's all kinds of how-tos online, and they can email me. Okay. And then you just write it to this by hitting W and return. Mm -hmm. And then you continue as you normally would. As we normally would, as if we're installing any operating system, correct? Is that Actually, what you're it's easier to install Linux than Windows. You say it's easier to install Linux than Windows. It is. Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to have to something think, tricky like dual booting. It gets a little tricky, right. but. But you just Still. showed us that it's pretty easy, especially if you print out the directions and follow them point by point. Now, if I don't have a version of Linux, where can I get one? Oh, you can download them from the web. You, okay. can, you can follow the links on, on my articles on your site. Mm -hmm. You can go to redhat.com. You can go to, uh, you know, You guys actually, meetings. at your company, OSDN, you, don't you offer? We have links to all this You have stuff. links yeah. to it. Okay. So, yeah. OSDN, there's, there's the now. website right there. Go there, and it will lead you in the direction of right. whatever Linux distributions you want. So, exactly. you can do this. And also, you always make yourself available to our viewers to email you yes. if they run into any problems. And what's your email address? Uh, it's Chris at OSDN.com. And we very much appreciate your making this. No problem. And I have a fact up with all kinds of links to everywhere. You know, I've, I get a lot of the same questions. So all right. It's all there for you. Excellent. Users. Chris, thank you, as always, for coming in for the quick and easy steps you've got to follow to get your dual boot PC up and running. Check out Chris's article at thescreensayers.com. Like I said, print out a copy before you do this.